Y'all, it was just so hot and sweaty today. Bad news, books are not gonna fit in those shelves. I'm gonna see if that paper fits. Fingers crossed, it looks really promising. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to part two of Classroom Setup. If you're new here, my name is Katie. I'm about to start my fifth year of teaching, and I'm going to be teaching third grade this year for the very first time. I have a car full. My husband has a car full. He just left, so we are about to take some things up to the school. The bulk of what we're taking today are my classroom library books. So, glad you guys are here for today's video. Let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> Okay, y'all, I am back home in the kitchen because I wish you could feel how stinking hot it is outside right now in Florida. So, David and I got there, we unloaded all the stuff, and we were dripping sweat. He went to work. <laughs> Poor David. Thank you for helping me, Dave. Um, and there were people on the custodian staff in my room, and so I didn't stick around. I didn't film anything. I didn't film us moving the boxes in. So, the next time I go in, which will be like next week... I'll show you what it looks like with all of our stuff in, but it was so nice because the custodian staff is gonna do the waxing of the tile. I mean, they were in there scraping things off of the whiteboards. It smelled like Clorox. Like they were deep cleaning the classroom and I am very, very appreciative of that. Like very, very grateful. So I was like, I'm just gonna stay out of their way because I was gonna put the books in the thing, but I was like, you know what? I don't wanna be in their way on the carpet if they're gonna vacuum or if they're gonna wax the tiles. So I just brought my things in, I checked with them and made sure none of it was in their way. And then I left and I was like pouring sweat on the drive home. So now I'm home in the kitchen and I'm probably just gonna fix myself a late breakfast and spend the day doing PD and I will do more classroom setup another time. But since you're here, here you get a sneak peek. Here's our like new house, here's our kitchen. Yay! We just hung this yesterday. Sorry if I'm making you dizzy because I'm like spinning around. Just hung this here yesterday. I think it looks really cute. And then we just put this light fixture in yesterday too. So that was really exciting. So now I'm gonna use my fancy kitchen. I gotta do dishes and I'm gonna make myself some food. And class up, classroom setup will resume next week. Y'all, it was just so hot and sweaty today. It was not, it was not a glamorous time. <laughs> All right, friends, we are back in the classroom today, getting ready to set up. We just brought in the final car loads. Like, I don't think I'm gonna need to get the cart from the front office anymore. So here's what we're looking at. All of this stuff. And there's more, like way back there, which you can't even see. So I think what I'm gonna do to start is try to figure out where I'm gonna put my classroom library books. Um, originally, I was thinking right here, I'm making this like my classroom library, but now I'm kind of looking at these shelves and I just don't know if they're gonna be tall enough. So I'm gonna try it out because you have to try and see what it looks like, what it does, and then we'll regroup. All right, good news and bad news. Good news, I got started on closet organization and I added the labels that I said I was gonna make in my last set of video for these. So I'm about to start in the storage closet. Also good news is I just emptied out a lot of those files. So I now have three big black crates that are empty because I wanna use those to store some math in the storage closet, which is why I wanted to do the classroom library because a lot of my black crates are full of library books. 
bad news. Books are not gonna fit in those shelves. The top two, let me show you. Like the top two are tall, and so books would fit in those, but then the bottom ones are shorter, just like the rest of the mini, mini cubbies. So I'm like asking for suggestions. What do I do with the cubbies? I don't think I want them to be student cubbies because they are really deep and things will get lost and their desks have these huge compartments. Let me show you. So like if they have this much space in their desk, do they really need all that stuff in a cubby too? Probably not. Um, maybe, I don't know. And then they can hang their backpacks back here on these hooks. So my two suggestions are not suggestions, questions for you. And I might answer them by the end of this vlog. I don't know. What should I do with all these cubbies? And where should my classroom library go? The only other option that I know that I have is this giant bookshelf that's in my storage closet. Let me show you. First off, how amazing is this? All this space. Um, this right here. I have this shelf and it's behind the door. So it doesn't let the door open all the way, which I don't like. But this is a honking bookshelf. I mean, huge. And so I've been trying to think about where it could go in the classroom. And at first I was thinking right here, but it's too long to even go right there. But that's like the only chunk of space that this bookshelf could go in. Because if you look at like the rest of the room, there's just stuff everywhere. Up against the walls. There's no more like big wall space. Because I'd cover a board here. And there's not any more wall space back here. And I'd have to cover some board up here if I put it back here. And I think I want my small group table to go back here. Um, and then like it can't go here because it would cover the cabinets and the door would open. So literally the only place that it could go is right there and it doesn't fit. But if I could just figure out a way to make that fit somewhere, there's just nowhere for it to go. And then I was thinking like maybe the Target Cube shelves because that could go under this area right here but I'd have to buy those which I could I think I get some money from PTO and like classroom setup money but then I'm also like kicking myself because I think they were on sale last week and I didn't get them because I have so much stuff it like kills me to have to buy a bookshelf when I have all this and I have that giant bookshelf but I don't really want it to like block an entire bulletin board I only have two bulletin boards so I don't want it to block an entire bulletin board. I don't know. I need to go look and see where my neighbor teachers have that bookshelf. But anyways, like that is something that I'm going to do later. Right now I'm working on math organization. I'm going to work in this storage closet. And all of these things are in here and like trays and buckets. And I think I'm going to keep a lot of the buckets that are already there. But I'm going to try to put some things maybe in some crates and get it a little more organized and add those green bins to this shelf. So this will be like my math shelf and everything's labeled and I can find it. All right, what I'm currently working on are all these bags. I strongly dislike the little baggies that curriculum send these things in because when we use them in my classroom, I usually just dump them in a bucket and put them in the middle of the table and let the students like grab and I don't do like the little individual baggies because then they just don't have what they need. Do you see this on my eyelash? Ew. That was dust on my eyelash. Okay, anyways, because then they don't have full sets or pieces are missing. So I just dump them in big buckets. But I don't want to get rid of all these little baggies right now. So I'm just going to find a better way to store the geo blocks and the inch tiles because the little green buckets that they were in are like overflowing. So I just cleaned out these two that they were in, just not very sorted. 
and I wiped them out. That's where that dust came from. And so now I think what I'll do is see if like all of the geo blocks will fit in one and all of the inch tiles will fit in another and like call it good. But I don't know if that's gonna work. So let's find out. <laughs> you can see how much better that fits in here because I just consolidated two boxes now oops I dropped one Ooh. now I didn't want to get rid of these bags because they are kind of nice small size of blocks so I just emptied the rest of them down at the bottom and then I kept some of the baggy ones because I thought these were nice ziplocs so now this should fit on top of this back here and they kind of sink into each other and I'm not crazy about that but it was in here, so we're gonna use it. Y'all, I just found a whole nother box. A whole nother box. Who needs this many, who needs this many geo blocks and inch tiles? This is nuts. I might just give up and put the geo blocks in one of my black crates, but I'm trying not to use all of my black crates just to store stuff back here. Oh man. All right, here's the end of our closet organizing for today. I need another label to say spinners and counters and calculators, so I'll have to make those at home. I put cubes in here, some of them are mine, some of them are foam, but for now that's fine. Foam cubes, didn't feel like taking those out of the bucket they were already in. I ended up moving the geo blocks into one of these because I knew I had a container and they're plastic ones and foam ones. Place value blocks, fractions, big clock. These are still empty for now. I guess I should do another label that says inch tiles too. I'll add that to my list. And that's all I have so far. So that's what I did in the math cabinet today. All right, it is now Thursday. It's been a while since I've come up to my classroom this week. Uh, last time I was here was Monday and I did all that organizing and then I left because they started waxing the floor and the tile in my room, which was really exciting. Um, and then we came back on Tuesday, David and I did, and there was a sign that said the wax was wet, don't come in. And so I just took yesterday off as well, gave it a lot of time to dry. And now we're back today and we're hoping that the wax will be dry. We can get into the room. And my plan is to have David help me move a bookshelf, that big black one. I'm gonna try it in a spot in my room. My friend Autumn and I talked about it and we think that it'll work in front of part of the whiteboard and I'll just sacrifice a little whiteboard space. And then hopefully I'll be able to set my classroom library books on that bookshelf. So that is the game plan for today. Maybe we can get in and get that done. That's just like my main goal for today. And then, um, and then it'll start. Like I really need to start printing out some things for my decor and hanging things. But I've also been waiting for the like, carpet to be vacuumed before I put the desks out. So we'll see what else I can get done besides for just the books today. But that's the main goal. Okay, you guys, the tile looks fantastic in here. It looks like almost brand new. I don't know if you can see it. So pretty and shiny. And then the bookcase, here it is. All right, so if I stand over here, this is kind of what it looks like. So it takes up a big chunk of that whiteboard, but I was thinking I have whiteboard space here and here and here. And last year I didn't even have any whiteboards in my classroom. So, and the ones that I would need the most are the ones that are like in the front that I would use to teach. So this is just gonna be like display space back there. Anyways, and if that bookshelf works and I don't have to buy a bookshelf to fit my um, classroom library books, then that's what I need to do. So now what I'm gonna do is clean it off cause it's a little dusty. And I'm going to get started putting my books on the bookshelf. I organized them last summer. I will link that video above if you wanna see how I organized them. I did them by author's last name and they all have labels on the spine. Um, I'm a little, not worried, but most of my classroom library is picture books because I've taught first grade for four years, so I don't really have a whole lot of chapter books. I do have some, and I'll make sure that I have a space for those 
on that shelf, hopefully. If not, maybe I'll do something like next to it with the chapter books. I don't know. I haven't completely decided, but I know that's where the library has to go because it's the only place. But I need to up my chapter book game. But the good news is like, I know they can check chapter books out from the library. So it's not all in my classroom library to have. Like I don't have to have all of the books that they need, right? Because a first year teacher may not have all the books that they need. Um, I just haven't accumulated a lot of chapter books. So if you have any chapter book recommendations for like third grade age that they love, drop them below and I will put some on my Amazon wish list and start to save up for some because I'd love to add some to my collection. But third graders like picture books too. So they're gonna be able to check out and look at all of my wonderful picture books that I'm about to fill the shelf with. Also, now that the big shelf is gone, this door opens all the way up. There were things behind it, so I've got to go through that and see what was on the ground behind it. But this closet feels like way, way bigger because it can open all the way up and I can actually walk inside. Finished the bookshelf, just ate a chocolate Velveeta, breakfast of champions, y'all. Um, and then I started to move some things in the back counter. Let me show you the bookshelf first. Here's what I'm working with. It looks so good. Um, I don't know about like the boxes, the book bins and stuff, because I have a ton of labeled book bins that I used my first year. Like I have a Thanksgiving label, Ocean, Christmas, all kinds of things, but I opted to do it in alphabetical order last year. And so I didn't use a lot of those book bins. So, what we have here is author's last name, alphabetical. And then when we get down to this shelf, whew, I kept all the decodables in here because I'm like, what if I have a struggling reader who just really needs to pull out one of these, like, um, those are kind of childish. I mean, I have a lot of childish books because I taught first grade, but what if they just need to pull out one that they can decode, right? Um, and then these were like group ones that I had that are decodables that I have like a class set of. And then down on the bottom, told you I don't have very many, are my few chapter books that I have. And then Ginny B. Jones. I didn't really know if I should take her out of the book bin or not. It kind of is making a good book end right now though, so I'm rocking with it. And then I have nonfiction texts right here. But then I was also going through my stuff up there and I realized I found another box of nonfiction texts that I took from our Wonders curriculum last year because they said we could take anything we wanted since they weren't using it next year. So I took some of my favorites like the Penguin nonfiction and the Alligator nonfiction. I only took nonfiction. Um, from the little decodables. So I have those and I don't have room for them right here with my non-fictions. And I also have a lot of laminated, um, what are those called? Scholastic News. I laminated a bunch of those to be non-fiction text. That way, like if you did like a non-fiction text feature hunt, you can pass one of those out to every student and they can like use it and look at it. And it's a lot easier when you don't have like a lot of actual non-fiction books in your library. So, I'm debating if I should move the nonfiction books over to that shelf where I was originally gonna put the library and just do those two cubbies on the top as like my nonfiction texts and have them in a completely different section. And then I can fit, I don't know, I could, I could pull out some more book bins, like I could do my Christmas and Thanksgiving one or whatever down here. I don't know if I want to do that though, but it might just give a better place for the nonfiction to live on their own. And also I found um, a couple more books in a, ba in a basket that are like my babies. 
like my favorite read alouds that I like to read with the class. Like I have a copy of Nuffle Bunny right here, but I also have my copy of Nuffle Bunny. And I have some of the Love Monster books, like, you know, the ones that I didn't want first graders to touch because they might mess them up. Um, I think I could trust third graders with them a little more. So maybe I could put them on the shelf. I'll have to go look through them, but that will add a little bit of extra um, volume to that as well. So anyways, it's looking good. I'm very glad that I decided to move the bookshelf out here. So Autumn, thanks for helping me decide that. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it looks really good. All right, and then the next thing I did was moved. I had all of these games in this cabinet from Monday's work, but I've decided to move them over here and do games here. And then my Legos and like marble things down here because I could move that shelf and it was deep enough. Um, and then I have to unpack these today. So I've got all these Ziplocs, cups, plates, silverware, and things that I save. And I'm planning to put those here because that's where I usually keep those things is above the sink. Cleaning stuff below the sink. And then over here is what I was working on in my first part one video was this wonderful cabinet. And I'm gonna see if I can continue to fit my craft supplies in here somehow. All right, this still has plenty of space. Well, okay, it's not as much as I thought. It still has a good bit. I could also take that shelf down like I did over here. I could do that with this too. I could take one of the shelves down. Actually, I think I might. I don't know, because I have this thing to fit in here. This is what I was talking about in part one. Um, that I keep odds and ends like Q-tips, buttons. I don't know why that's not closing all the way. Stickers, which I could put the stickers in my sticker bucket, but toothpicks, jingle bells and spiders. What else do we have? Googly eyes. And if I can open this last one, looks like popsicle sticks and food coloring. So there you go. It's kind of just random, but I do not think it's going to fit up there right now. So this is what I'm about to tackle is trying to put these three things away in the cabinets, how I want to stow them over here. Here's a pro tip, get cheapy measuring cups and measuring spoons for your classroom. I'm pretty sure these are from like the Dollar Tree or they might be from Walmart, but they're like the cheapest you can get. But every time we would do like a cooking recipe and we'd make applesauce or we'd do crock pot hot chocolate, I would always bring my measuring things from home and it was like one extra thing that I had to make sure I packed with me. And then finally my second or third year, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna buy some to keep in my classroom. So anytime we're doing something like even slime, anytime we're making like silly putty or slime or anything like that, I can just pull these out and I don't have to worry about bringing them from home. Super cheap and I just store it with all of my plates and Ziploc baggies and all that. All right, we're about to wrap up for the day because yeah, I've just been here for like two hours. So let me show you cabinets, what I've been working on real quick. And then I've got one more task I wanna try to accomplish today. It is really starting to look like a teacher works in this classroom now. I'm excited. I already showed you the games, so I won't show that to you again, just briefly. That's what it ended up looking like, like fun stuff and games. Um, I put all of the plates, napkins, silverware, Ziploc baggies. I'm shocked by how many gallon size bags I have. All of that goes up here, silverware, etc. Underneath, I put cleaning supplies. I always keep those under or above the sink. Then over here, I've got all the craft stuff. So I ended up, you saw the struggle, ended up moving this down. Like I said, this fit in there fine, but I can only fit one thing of boxes on this side. So I just have some assorted items here right now. It doesn't look great, but it's fine. 
and my um, hot glue guns. And then down here, I have the rest of those bins, and I think that's perfectly fine right there. They're clear so I can see what's in them before I like bend down to get it. And I put my most frequently used ones here. This one has command strips and Velcro, and then this one has paint, so it's like the heaviest one. So those are the ones that I use the most often, so I kept those up at the top. But that's what it's looking like. I still need to find a home for these things. I haven't figured out how many supplies just yet. And then I came over here and did a little bit in here. Just was working on unpacking boxes. So there's a couple of things like my markers, my calendar set, where I keep my birthday stuff, and then sticker store stickers. So that was just kind of put in there for now, but this may end up being my cabinet because it's back here by my desk. So with like assorted things that I use. The back cabinet or counter is looking so much better. Here's all of the crates I emptied from all those books. Here's where I ended up moving my nonfiction books. I did go ahead and move them over here because I just wanted to put a couple more on my bookshelf. I figured this would be a good place because I keep, I'm probably going to keep our little science source and dictionaries over here and I need to use these shelves. So I figured nonfiction could go there and then I could do the sources and dictionaries there as well because there's all the, like, I might move those over. We'll see. Um, but yeah, you can tell, kind of, that I've cleared some stuff out like this is completely empty now except for the wheels and that like little header most of a lot of the boxes that are over here have been moved and emptied I guess it's hard to tell on the counter but when you look over here you can see like I emptied this one this one this one this one on top this Walmart one and then that one on the chair so I've emptied a ton of boxes today so the last task that I'm going to do is I looked inside my drawers found my stapler I am going to see if my better than paper fits on these two front boards because after today is Thursday and the school will be closed on Fridays in the summer. So I'm not really going to be back here till next week. And so if I need to order some paper or go pick some up, I can do so this weekend. I could do that tomorrow or I could do it Saturday if I wanted to because um, I'll have a couple weekend days. So I'm going to see if that paper fits. Fingers crossed. It looks really promising. I am so excited. This fit almost perfect. There's like a little bit at the bottom and then a little bit at the top, but it gets covered by a border anyways. So it fit, pumped. Okay, so those are my two bulletin boards. I just have to work on borders for those. And then I have one other that's in the back, this long skinny one. And I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. I do have one more roll of the better than paper because in my old classroom I had three bowls and boards that were all the same size so I have another roll that's that size so what I could do is like measure it and I'm not gonna do this today no we're not doing this today because I'm tired uh, <laughs> I could measure it and cut it and then like do it long ways across the top of the skinny board it's possible and like piece it together up there I've seen um, Kim from elementary in the mitten she works wonders on her back wall with her um, wooden wall that she puts in her classroom every year. And she pieces this better than paper together so well. So I know I could do it for that little board. But for today, I, at least I know I don't have to buy any more paper because that fits great on those two front boards. And that will work somehow on this back one. So I think I'm going to call it like that might be the end of classroom setup for today. And I'm just gonna wrap up part two as well. I'm gonna sit in this chair as I do so, cause I'm tired. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for watching and for joining for part two of classroom setup. Clearly, just by showing you around the room, there's still lots of work to be done. I'm so grateful for the amazing custodial staff that has worked wonders in this classroom. It is so clean, um, feels great feels good to have things put away now and we are moving and grooving. I'm also very grateful that my school lets me come up 
during the summer school days and during school hours or like workday hours during the summer because the goal is to have this like set up and ready to go before in-service days so when in-service days come I can just focus on being a teacher so please make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to my channel obviously there's another part of this video coming probably another few parts because I got a lot to do um, thank you guys so much for watching leave me any advice that you have for classroom setup in the comments below and I will see you guys in the next one.